Good Saturday evening, everybody, live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee. I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. Welcome to Periscope and Twitter. For those of you who are tuning in to see what's going on with weather in the Mid-South, we do have, again, the possibility of a few more snow showers lingering into parts of the area. But as of right now, it, again, does not appear to be the possibility of anything major for, again, the possibility of anything involving closing schools. So good news on that. But outside of that, there is still going to be some snow around the Mid-South, so please keep that in mind if you are going to be sticking around and driving across much of the area for later on tonight. Again, could be some slick spots out there. Maybe, again, the possibility of some uh, areas where we see some lower visibility into parts of the Mid-South, but beyond that, we're just not seeing all that much in the way of major problems, at least at this point. Anyway, even though the reports of snow are light on the ground, we could be looking at more potential problems out there again into the evening hours. More possibility of snow later on this week kind of, sort of. We might see the potential of some more problems heading our direction as we get into the rest of the forecast for areas north of the Mid-South, but immediately here in the area, it looks like it's going to be way too warm for anything involving anything but rainfall, so definitely some good news on that. So if you have any plans for travel, we'll tell you more about where you need to look out for on that coming up here in just a little bit, so stay tuned for more on that with News Channel 3, and we'll keep you advised on what's going on in the Mid-South as we head throughout the rest of the evening. Got a lot to talk about for tonight. Let me welcome in all of our Facebook viewers as well for tonight. The beloved ghost, welcome to the show on Periscope for this evening. And thanks to everybody for joining me on the Facebook channel, giving everybody a chance to get in here and take a look around for just a little bit before we get into diving into the rest of the forecast. Let's go ahead and bring you up to date on what's going on with the forecast into tomorrow morning. If you can't stick around for the whole forecast, all you have to do is go to the bottom of the screen on Periscope and Twitter. Cerise, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thank you very much for tuning in. Blue bar at the bottom of your screen on Periscope and Twitter. That's where you're seeing, again, the forecast scrolling on by. Also, don't forget about our forecast available at wrag.com slash weather. You can get more details about our seven-day forecast and about a whole bunch of other stuff as well. And again, wrag.com. And don't forget about, again, my email address at austin.onic at wrag.com. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, anything you'd like to ask, please let me know. Love to have you along for the ride. Here's what it looks like into tomorrow morning. Again, some clouds across the Mid-South, but clearing out into the rest of the day as we get rid of whatever moisture we have across the Mid-South into later on tonight. This is just the air temperature. It's going to be even more chilly out across much of the area toward tomorrow morning, so expecting some more problems there. Paula Wicker Hamby snowing in Glimp near Henning. I don't think I've ever been there before uh, at this point in time. Uh, following Austin around the internet like a U2 European concert tour, Kevin Dunn. I wish I had that type of budget. I would love to follow Bono and the Edge uh, around the rest of the, uh, popping around the continent for a while. But for now, I'm just here in the Mid-South area. But thank you for giving me a reason to increase my, my expense account, at least hopefully. Here's what it looks like in Germantown. Again, very breezy winds, mid to upper 30s on temperatures, and wind chills across the area back in the lower 30s. So we have some very breezy conditions out there. That's that's why it looks kind of hazy. We have a front pushing through the Mid-South, part of a storm system called a short wave. It's a very quick-moving storm system. These things can alter even wreck forecasts. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about on that one. And again, this is a storm system that we talked about earlier this evening that made its way on three. Uh, Anastasiosa, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thanks for joining us for this evening and more opportunities to talk about what's going on with the forecast. A little dusty as those winds continue to kick up. Fairly breezy night. You can see some of that going on just along and north of the area around downtown, and the lights from Big River Crossing reflected in some of that dust and that very light snowfall that's just above a few thousand feet up around our cotton exchange camera in downtown Memphis. Also the reason our transmitter tower cam is a little wibbly wobbly this evening. Live picture tonight from I-40 Sycamore View exit here. The flyover looking back toward the roughly west-southwest area and you can see traffic a little lighter than what it was a little while ago but still picking up in intensity if you are going to be driving across much of the area tonight. Could be some windy conditions out there so again please keep that in mind if you are going to be driving anywhere across 
across the Mid-South coming up a little bit later on for tonight. And some of those snow showers could be a bit of a problem out there into the evening hours. We're not seeing a lot of problems at the airport. Again, a little windy out there as the winds continue to jostle the I-240 and Airways camera around for this evening. Mostly cloudy, gusty winds over 20 miles per hour at Memphis International for tonight. The good news is if you're catching a red-eye flight, we do not see any delays. That information according to the Federal Aviation Administration. If you'd like your information on your website for here in Memphis or throughout the rest of the continental United States and points beyond, great information for now. Newark is, again, the main problem area for tonight. A few more backups and delays of about 15, uh, 50, uh, 45 minutes or more into that area, and that trend unfortunately appears to be holding steady, not getting better. So if you're heading through Newark late tonight, that could be a bit of a slowdown, but everybody else seeing no problems at all. More information from the website, fly.faa.gov. If you'd like to find out more information about what's going on there. Here in the Mid-South area, again, Storm Tracker 3S. Not a lot happening at this time. Let me ramp up the sensitivity here for just a second, and we'll see a little bit more into the area, or quite possibly just a little bit less. That gray color right there, right around I-40, that is where we are seeing the area of some snow showers taking place. Very light in nature, making its way down toward the south end of the east. So anything from around Lexington all the way back to around Millington, we are seeing some snow showers taking place at this time. And that's, again, where we see the heaviest. This is basically it for the evening, is the point from what we're looking at for right now. So if you're counting on on school being out in the morning because of this, you're not going to be really all that happy about what goes on with this for right now. So, but you may see some snow flurries coming down here relatively soon as this drops into the rest of southwest Tennessee. If this holds together, and I say if because over the last few hours, this area of snow was a lot larger and has done a very good job of kind of compacting downwards the farther it goes to the southeast. So we may see some snow flurries out of this, and maybe some of this will be making its way into around northeastern Mississippi over the next couple of hours. But for right now, I don't see a major problem with this uh, becoming stronger or dropping any more problems. We have had reports uh, in the last couple of hours up around Dyersburg, uh, northwest Tennessee, the Boot Hill, northeast Arkansas, southeast Missouri, picking up some snow showers into and around the area there uh, across much of the area for that. Mike Mike Launius is going to clear off tonight in cold water. Going to be trying to clear off a little bit in northern Mississippi around that area, but most of what we're looking at for right now should be cloud cover. Getting some drier air in, we should erode the clouds into, again, tomorrow morning, but it's going to take a while for this moisture to be working its way into the area. Hey, back to Danny Young. Thanks for joining us tonight. Snowing in Burleson, Tennessee. Pat Ham, thank you very much. Uh, for that one, Nancy Bell, 30 in Dyersburg and snowing. Thank you very much for that report on there. If you're on Periscope and Twitter, again, please let us know where you're checking in from and give us more information about what the weather is like in your area, whether you're in the Mid-South or out of the Mid-South. We'd love to see where you're checking in from and to get more details about what's going on. Now, again, watch what goes on over the last few hours, starting over here in southwest Missouri and then tracking into the Mid-South. This is not what it used to be. Several hours worth of this snow making its way down to the south and to the east was a lot more moisture here, but I think what's happening is the moisture over here is getting overpowered by the dry air, and that dry air moving in from behind is starting to get rid of all that snow showers. So we did have a lot more. We don't have that much anymore, and I doubt we're going to be seeing too much. So around Corinth, Ripley, Mississippi, Oxford, into around Vihalia, you may see some snow flurries in the next couple of hours, but really doubtful, especially with the way that echo just drops off right there by the time it hits I-40. I really doubt we're going to be seeing too much of anything else uh, more than that throughout the course of the rest of the evening. Beloved Ghost, welcome back to the show on uh, Periscope. Thanks for joining us tonight on Twitter as well, and everybody else checking in on Facebook for tonight. Paulette Anders clearing cold in Bartlett, 36 degrees. Thank you very much for that. Sherielle Crane, hope I'm saying that right, in South Haven, not doing anything. Okay, well, definitely good, no good news to know that there is stuff going on and not stuff going on, so good news to uh, know about that. Let's take a look and see what's going on with WeatherNet 3. Got to talk about wind chills again. We've got numbers back into the teens this evening across much of the Mid-South area. These are the air temperatures. Combine these with the winds, and you get numbers that feel like this. 
For those of you nitpicky people out there who say there is no such thing and this is all made up by the National Weather Service, no it's not. Wind chill is a real thing. There's a mathematical formula for it. Go look it up. I don't have time to explain it to you for right now for all the naysayers out there. And yes, for everybody else who's watching, yes, there are people who think that that is a myth or that we make it up to get ratings. No, it's not. So just throwing that out there again for you. Nice little pre-National Weather Person's Day uh, bit of trivia for you in case you were wondering. Going to continue to see these numbers get very chilly into early tomorrow morning, so please keep that in mind if you're going to be heading the kids out to the bus stop in the morning at this time. Uh, Linda Schrader from Atoka, snow and cold. Billy Franklin, overcast, 36 degrees in Lexington. Thank you very much uh, for that weather report. These chances of snow showers, the computer has these things hanging around piecemeal into the rest of the evening, so not much of any a chance, not much of any great chance, I guess I should say, coming up as we get into the early morning hours. Now, tomorrow morning around daybreak, we got numbers back in the lower 20s, winds coming in out of the north and northeast, so we do have, again, a lot of problems with wind chills tomorrow. Also tomorrow, the maximum temperatures are not going to be that maximum, mid to upper 40s at best across much of the area. Jay Trailer 11, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thanks for joining us, and thanks everybody for checking in on Facebook as well. J Credit 50, welcome to the show on Periscope. Thanks for dropping on by. And for the rest of the Mid South into Monday evening, News Channel 3 at 10 with Jim Jaggers, lower to mid 30s. But more importantly, winds start to switch around briefly out of the south, and that's going to help to keep the temperatures up and escort in more moisture coming our way. That's going to keep the temperatures very mild as we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, and that's going to be important because as the cold air sits in place right to our north, warm moist air is going to ride up over the top of that and make its way to give possibility of some snow showers what you see here in the white, blue, and purple colors back to our north. Notice it really does not affect the Mid-South outside of this trace amount that we're getting into the area for tonight. Now, from Tuesday morning into around Wednesday morning, more moisture arrives coming up from the Gulf of Mexico, riding over the top of that very cold air sitting in place just to our north. The green colors here showing the possibility of some very mild air across the Mid-South area, but here's the dividing line right from here, and this is where we start to see some problems very early Wednesday morning. These dark purple areas that you see showing up here, that's the potential of freezing rain and sleet. Now again, and most importantly, this does not look to be a threat for the Mid-South. Jonesboro and Northwest, that's going to be the main thing that we see anything in the way of problems out there for tonight. So again, we could be seeing uh, the possibility of some maybe some slick conditions into portions of the Mid-South just northwest of us as we go into early Wednesday morning, which means that if you're going northwest of Jonesboro, north of Blytheville, up toward Paducah, St. Louis, uh, Rolla, into around Fort Leonard Woods, Springfield, Missouri, you may see the possibility of some slick conditions up and around southern Missouri, northern Arkansas, even into around west Kentucky and southern Illinois. It doesn't look huge, but it does look like, again, this is is a good time to let you know that this is what may be happening out there, especially if you're going to be traveling from the News Channel 3 viewing area north or especially northwest. That's where you could run into some slick spots out there. I still don't really see this. Again, with more mild conditions here, keeping the cold air at bay, I just don't see a lot of major activity coming into the area. Bank Boris, welcome to the show on Periscope for tonight. Glad to have you along uh, for this evening. Thanks for stopping on by. Mike Sowell, uh, number one. Thanks a lot for stopping by as well on Facebook. Shelly Jean Simmons, hope the ice and the snow stay away from Memphis. I really think we're not going to get too much of anything down this direction, especially if that milder air sticks around the Mid-South just enough to get the moisture on top of the cold air. Then as soon as that's done and the moisture is wrung out of the atmosphere, the moisture moves off to the east. The cold air stays back this direction. So I just don't see too much of anything for us in the way of major amounts of concerns uh, where it comes to ice and snow here in the Mid-South. Hillary Emerson, no snow, don't want it. Okay, that's one vote no uh, for the snow. Thomas Crane, I would love a snow day and be off of work. My wife as a teacher would definitely agree with that. Uh, Mary Conda Gitoni, thanks a lot for joining us uh, on Periscope. Bank Boris, again, thanks for joining us as well uh, for this evening. Visiting in Hernando tonight, just cold. Dana Thorpe Chisholm, 
Thank you very much at this point in time for dropping on through. Uh, Snow here, Laura Fleming, thank you very much uh, for that one. Linda Schrader, I want a snow day. Sorry, not going to be happening at this point in time from what it looks like. Uh, Tanya Watson, snowing in Brighton, thank you very much uh, for that report. Laura Fleming, 32 degrees in Covington. And Shelly Jean Simmons from uh, Berclair, thank you very much uh, for checking on in for right now. Yasinu Nguyen, Nguyen, Nguyen from uh, Periscope, thanks for ch ch dropping on by for the this evening and thanks for sticking around for a little bit more of the show there. So right now our chances of winter weather just really does not look to be too much out there. Let's see Barb Elaine from Munford, thank you very much for checking in. Laura Fleming, welcome from Covington. Fog tomorrow morning doesn't look to be too much of a problem, but around say Covington, Brownsville, we could see some maybe some smaller amounts of visibility problems uh, early into tomorrow morning. Here's the forecast as it stands right now, running the numbers throughout the rest of the next couple of days, mid to upper 40s for national weather. Person's Day, a true American weather holiday as opposed to that furry fake forecaster thing that happened a couple of days ago. So again, something to think about for right there for everything. Uh, Danny Young, always weird, goes over or under us or the air is to try, it evaporates before reaching the ground. Yeah, my wife calls that the snow bagel, believe it or not. It seems to uh, always try to avoid much of the Mid-South area, believe it or not. Nick Montroy, an NYC music fan, welcome to the show on Periscope for tonight. Thanks for joining us. A few clouds into tomorrow morning. What do we have in the way of rainfall? Should basically be over with by about midnight tonight, maybe just after that, a few lingering, very light showers possible, and that's going to be about it. A little warmer, and that's great news because we'll be getting rain and maybe some thunderstorms coming up on Tuesday. Now, Tuesday night into around Wednesday, that's where we may see the possibility of some of that rain mixed with some thunderstorms. Now, so far, the Storm Prediction Center does not have a severe weather threat for this area, but this is going to be the time to make certain that we pay attention to what's going on out there with, again, the potential for more areas of maybe some severe weather. And this is important at this time of the year because this is the prime season for severe weather in the Mid-South area. From roughly January through about early May, somewhere in there, now's the time to be ready for severe weather and know what to do when severe weather hits. So again, this is going to be your opportunity to get ready for that. And this is our opportunity to let you know what's going on if there is going to be severe weather across much of the area. So again, so far it doesn't look that way, but we are going to be keeping our eyes on that as we go into the next couple of days. Overcomer 32, welcome to the show on Periscope for tonight. And then clearing skies as some drier air moves on through as we get into around uh, Wednesday or so. That's going to be the, about the best opportunity for anything going on there. Welcome to everybody who's joining us on the show a little late tonight on Periscope, Twitter, and Facebook. If you've got weather reports, again, drop them into the comments section. We'll read off what the temperature's like into your various locations. So again, thank you very much uh, for everybody for checking in on a late Sunday evening in the Mid-South. First weekend of February has not really gone all that bad. Things are decently quiet out across much of the area, so we're just not seeing too many major concerns out there. Now, temperatures over the next several days remain, again, very much on the calm side, dry side for the most part as we go toward the end of the week. More chances of rain coming up on Friday and then again on Saturday and Sunday going to continue to see some more showers, but it looks like it's going to be too warm for anything but rainfall across much of the area out there for the rest of the next couple of hours. Donna Swackhammer B, welcome to the show from Hernando. Thanks a lot for dropping on by for this evening. And thanks a lot to everybody for joining us on Periscope and Twitter for tonight. Again, if you've got weather reports, love to be able to see them in and around the Mid-South. Now, past this, as we go into around the area around next weekend, we still see some showers out across the Mid-South. And some of those might linger, unfortunately, into around Valentine's Day. So that could be a bit of a problem for schedule purposes. If you and your significant other are heading out for some Valentine's Day dinner and a movie, something like that going on, it will be a little cooler on Valentine's Day. Uh, as well at this point. So this is where we could see, again, a few scattered showers out there, but uh, really not looking at too much more than that at this point. So again, definitely uh, semi-good news out into the area. Uh, let's see, get that back up here. Murray Conda J. J. Tony from Tempe, Arizona. Wow, thanks a lot for checking in from out that direction. And say hi to uh, my wife's cousin, Megs, and her husband, 
uh, Dr. Eric out if you're around Tucson in that area. So thank you very much for tuning in on Periscope for early this evening. We see again the possibility, you see Rich Bircher, I can do without the snow out in my area. Uh, Rich Bircher on Facebook, everybody, my former director from Topeka, Kansas, uh, in the hospital with a bit of a problem with the ankle, uh, setting off now metal detectors with the new uh, brace going on. Hope uh, the everything goes well with the rehabilitation on the ankle, Rich, and everybody say hi to Rich for me, really nice guy, his daughter and his son, Bethany and Ricky, back in Topeka, Kansas, my old stomping around. Nice to see you uh, tuning in for tonight, and thank you very much for doing so. Hope the Corgi is doing well. Uh, PJ, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember the name correctly, so uh, my love to everybody back in Topeka, Kansas, so thanks for stopping on by there. All right, whether where the troops are, if you've got friends or loved ones serving in the United States military, this is our little salute to those people out there who are, again, serving in the military out across much of the country. Uh, let's see. Thanks a lot to everybody for dropping on by. K. Ladd Meadows, light snow in Munford for this evening. Thank you very much for dropping on by for this evening. Dumas, Mississippi, Nathan Stroop, 40 degrees and 88% humidity. Thank you very much uh, for the weather report there. Uh, thanks for stopping on by. 32 degrees at Naval Support Activity in Millington. And thanks to my wife for... Uh, suggesting this. I hadn't even thought about this, but this is a military area, and this is a great opportunity to, again, see uh, some of what goes on here in the Mid-South area. North winds at about 15. Going a little farther abroad than Millington, taking a look at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba, 74 degrees, 87-year high today. No rainfall to report in and around the areas of eastern Cuba. Iraq temperatures back in the upper 30s to lower 40s very early, just pre-sunrise on Monday morning. On the other side of the globe, a few clouds around Najaf, back toward Baghdad and mid to upper 40s around the area of Mosul for early this evening. So we do again see the possibility of some colder conditions there into the next couple of days. Fairly chilly in Afghanistan at this point in time. So again, this is where we see uh, the very cool temperatures out across much of the area there. Jennifer Sue Day, welcome from Halls, Tennessee. A little bit of some chilly conditions out there. Rocky Miller, can I tell you if you'll have school tomorrow? No, I cannot tell you if you're going to have school tomorrow. I would like to, but I'm a meteorologist. I'm not a school superintendent. You'll have to make certain you monitor your school's website to see uh, what goes on there. We do not have that information, and if anybody was going to cancel school tonight, they would call it into the news desk, and I don't have that information if they have done that, but I cannot tell you if that's going to go on. But thank you for thinking of me in such a nice light. All right, back into Afghanistan, temperatures very cold around Faizabad, back into the lower teens, 20s around Kabul and Kandahar, 30 with clear skies around Herat in the northwestern part of the country. Persian Gulf, not bad, back into the chilly conditions around Kuwait and also around Riyadh in Saudi Arabia, mid to upper 50s throughout the rest of the Persian Gulf. And if you've got anybody back around the Korean Peninsula at this point in time, uh, this is again for right now. Let's see Donna Swackhammer B., Nephew in Afghanistan, praying for his safety and all the military. Yes, very good. Uh, again, thank you to anybody out there who is wearing the uniform. My own dad, uh, 24 years, Kansas Army National Guard, uh, six-month tour of duty in Vietnam with 69th Inf Infantry Brigade, so always uh, wanting to help out to let people know more about what's going on with the military, with everybody watching on the home front. So again, something to think about here. Teens, some very cold air over the last couple of days, rolling straight down from Siberia over portions of the area of the Korean Peninsula, and teens right around the DMZ, lower 20s across much of the area as we approach noon on Monday. And again, fairly cold for right now, but not as cold as it has been out there. If you'd like to get this information where your friends or relatives may be, Here's a great place to go to. It's the World Meteorological Organization. You can get their website address again at the top of the screen, public.wmo.int. Great opportunity to see more into the area. Uh, Kirk, Jennifer Dowell, snowing in North Mississippi in the morning. No, it looks like it is going to be uh, over and done with within the course of just the next few hours. So there's really just not that much left over at this time. Whatever we have in the way of snow showers tonight will be over and done with by about midnight, and that should be about it. Skywarn spotter training, severe weather season is here. It is now, and you need to be ready for it. And you can help the National Weather Service help people like me to help people like you and your neighbors get ready for severe weather 
by taking these courses. These are the first four that are going to be coming up around the Mid-South area. And again, there'll be more of them, including Memphis and Shelby County. So if you'd like to know more about this, drop by our website at WREG.com. You show up, you take the class for an hour, hour and a half. You ask questions. You learn what to look for before, during, and after severe weather. And your information as a volunteer spotter can help the National Weather Service pinpoint what's happening and broadcast that information to the rest of the area, helping other people stay safe. It's a very simple process, but the basic bottom line is that if we have more people watching what excuse me, goes on when it comes to severe weather, the better we are all going to be protected when we all help each other do this. So this is going to be your opportunity to learn more, and we'll be bringing you more information about these classes over the course of the next several weeks. So keep it tuned here for more information on that. Storm Hunters number one, thanks a lot for a great view of the eclipse from a couple of evenings ago. Grady Bennett, 37 in Berclair. Thank you very much at this point. Do appreciate that. Uh, again, thank you very much uh, for that one out there into the area. Let's see. Well, I gave Shane Davis, I gave Rich a very good shout out, actually. I'm not too sure exactly what it is you're referring to on that, but uh, thanks for stopping on by. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining us again for this evening uh, at this point. So, again, thanks for sticking around. Nancy Bell, the happy National Weather Person's Day. Thank you very much. Actually, I will be uh, not here tomorrow, as far as I know, if Todd is not going to be taking the day off. So, I'll be uh, taking the day for myself, my usual one of my days off anyway. Maria underscore Wyndham, beautiful view of Sardis Lake Sun set from Saturday night and a nice view of cloudy skies around Humboldt, Tennessee into around the area of James R. Gulledge. Thank you very much. Sounds like the Super Bowl party continues in the background for right now. Or pardon me, the Superb Owl game, I guess I should say, out there to foil any copyright lawyers that may be listening for tonight. If you haven't seen all these Superb Owl pictures out across the area, this is something that we may see again for the evening hours. Uh, something to take a look at into and around the Mid-South. So we should see, again, uh, some pretty nice conditions out there for picture-taking for right now. If you've got weather pictures, we would love to see more from what you see across the Mid-South, especially with the snow showers going on for tonight. So if you've got pictures, again, you can drop them off on my Facebook page. We'd love to see what kind of pictures you have out there. Aonic underscore WREG3 on Twitter. Thanks a lot to everybody who's dropped off some of those pictures that you just saw in the Mid-South. And, of course, Aonic, no underscore necessary, WREG3 on Instagram, and we'd love to see your pictures out there and pass them along to everybody. Join me tomorrow morning with Bob and Josh on Talkback Live, AM 730, in and around the Mid-South area for the Shelby County Memphis metro area. But if you're outside of this signal area, you can get more information at talkbacklivenetwork.org, and you can listen in for great sports chat in the Mid-South area. Be glad to have you along for that. And my forecast Monday through Friday with Bob and Josh from 8 to 10 a.m. So thank you very much for them on that. And, of course, we'll have a complete update of your forecast bright and early tomorrow morning with News Channel 3's Todd Demers, so stick around for more on that, again, starting at 4.30 in the morning. Complete update of your forecast coming up on News Channel 3 at 10 with yours truly. And, of course, we'll have news with Kristen Holloway. Mike Sadie's got a very busy day in sports with the superb owl game going on for this evening. And more information across the area for the area tonight. Again, we'll have more details about where the snow is if there's anything left by News Channel 3 at 10 and into the rest of the forecast, which, again, the next snowstorm coming on through north of us does not look like a major system for us here in the Mid-South area, so definitely good news on that. More questions, send them to me at austin.onic at wreg.com. Would love to, again, answer any questions you've got about the forecast and make certain you stay tuned tonight for News Channel 3 at 10 for an update on that. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onic. Stay tuned for a lot more with News Channel 3 on air and on online throughout the rest of the evening and right on into next week.